today we're going to remove background color from a PDF. Now I initially had two methods, but I'm only going to focus on method one, and I'm going to be using the free GIMP software that is very similar to Photoshop. It doesn't matter what PDF reader you're using, GIMP is all we need. So first of all, we need to go to this website, GIMP Downloads. GIMP knows what software you're using or what OS you have. However, if you want one for a different OS, you can simply click these links and download them. We're going to download the GIMP for us. And if you wait a few seconds, up comes the link and we'll simply press save. Now I have done this already and installed it. It's a very easy installation and you need to do the same too. Here you can see I have uploaded to Google Drive a PDF version of the instructions within this video. So if you don't have time to watch all the video, you can simply go to this Google Drive link I will put below and download the PDF version of this video I have made. Here is a quick overview of the instructions. We're simply going to open GIMP in PDF. Then we're going to edit the look of the interface. Here is the interface. It's a bit small, a bit plain. We're going to make it look better and easier to use. Then, in part one of the editing process, we're going to delete one background color. As you can see here, there are two types of yellow and we can simply remove one of the yellows. And if you're happy with that, you can simply go to step seven and export as a PDF. In part four, we're going to edit more colors. As you can see here, now all the colors have disappeared or at least both yellows have. In part five, we're going to delete an image. Some people thought these images were too childish and therefore should be removed. So we'll do that in part five. And there you can see the result is a nice clean PDF. However, we can also make sure that the text is a bit darker because as we go on, photocopying and even showing it on the board, it might be not as clear. So the next page, you can see that looks a lot better, a lot darker, a lot clearer. And finally, we're going to save the file and export as a PDF. Normally you would simply click file and save as, but in GIMP, you have to actually export it. And you can export it into many different formats, JPEG, PNG, or PDF. Now, in order to import a PDF, you can simply click File, Open, and then click on the particular file you want. So we're going to click on the yellow scan. This is a PDF. And when it opens up, this PDF has seven pages, but we only want to choose one. We're going to choose this one yellow page. You can decide whether it's layers or images, it doesn't matter. But make sure you change this to 300, and I'll show you why now. If I was to import this now in the 100 setting, when you zoom in, you'll see that the words are not very clear. They're quite horrible. So let's open it again. And this time, I don't want to import them all. Make sure you click on the one you want, which is the first one. So click outside, click on the one you want. And move this up to 300. Press import. And now if you zoom in, you can see it's a lot clearer, a lot nicer. Now the way I'm moving around this is I'm pressing on the wheel button of the mouse. And as I press down, I get the cross, which is a navigational cross. 
Now this navigational cross you can find here and therefore you can now I can move like this but let's leave that there and what I'm going to do is add a navigational link you can see with my move tool what I've done is I've accidentally moved this around so I'm going to press Control Z to backspace everything back to normal and click on this top left icon which is the best this is your select tool now the first thing I want to do is I want to add a navigational I want to add this cross tool to this spectrum so we go here tool options add tab and we're going to add the navigational tab if I can find it there it is navigational tab and now that will remain there and what it means is I can click on these icons at the bottom and move this toolbar to make things bigger and then I can move around here or hold down the wheel mouse button and move like this so that's the navigational toolbar added next we're going to change the look of these icons because I don't like the way they look we need to do a few things as well in preferences go up to edit preferences and the first thing you need to do is to change this level to 20 because when I pressed Control Z to go backwards it would only do it five times so I need to I want about 20 levels to move back in case I make a lot of mistakes next we're going to the icon theme I don't like this symbolic I prefer the color one and there you can see much more colorful but what I'm going to do as well click on this arrow and choose custom icon size and I want to make the icons as big as I can there that's nice see how large they are a lot more easier to see and use and remember you can always move your mouse to get this black arrow and stretch the canvas a bit like that stretch it a bit wider there you go finally if you so wish you can add a different theme we have the dark gray here you can add the white system if you wish which is a bit bright for me but you might like this or you can go to a more grayer look I'm going to stick with the dark theme and I'm going to press OK so we've done part one we have opened a PDF in GIMP and edited the look of GIMP interface so actually we've done part one and two next in part three we're going to edit the background color by deleting just one of the colors here we are back at our interface I'm going to hold control and wheel down the mouse that way I can zoom out a bit now initially you will have this icon highlighted because it's the best tool in order to make sure you have escaped all the other tools these all select the area you wish to edit we're going to select an area by color and it's very simple you click on this icon you can see here there's a threshold mark now I'm going to move that down to 46 and if I click on the yellow the light yellow area it gets highlighted and if I press the delete key or you can simply write edit and then clear the delete key you can see it's only chosen the lighter yellow now in order to finalize this I simply go over here flatten the image go back to my tool here on the top left and click anywhere on the image and now you can see 
that that colour has gone. It was that simple. Next we're going to delete both yellows. So let's go back here. Now I'm going to press Ctrl Z to go back to the original status of the image. Now this time I want to remove more than one colour. If I go to this section here and I click on, I make sure it's on this first one, I click on that yellow, that yellow will be removed. If I was to click on the darker yellow and press delete, the darker yellow would be removed. If I want to include both yellows, I simply have to click on one of the yellows first, let's say this lighter one, Click on this icon, which allows me to click on an extra color, and then I'll click on this dark yellow. Now when I press delete, or if I right click and delete, all of the yellows have disappeared. Now I simply right click here, flatten the image, make sure I go to the top left, click on that and click anywhere, and now you can see the PDF has been made. This is just a selector square. Now, as you can see, all we're left with is black and white and a few images. Now in part five, we're going to delete an image using either the rectangle tool or the lasso tool. Now this is the rectangle tool and it selects that area. If I was to press delete, all of that area goes. So let's move into this image which we want to get rid of. I can simply select that square, delete, and then I can select another bit, delete, and now that image has gone. And very quickly I can move around the text, zooming in and deleting, pressing delete, and move around the text, doing this, delete another one, quickly move around, press delete, and now the only one I have left is this thing in the middle. Now, if we try to use this tool to eliminate this, we will actually lose a lot of text as well. So for this, we use the lasso tool. So just click anywhere, in the page, click the lasso tool, zoom in, and simply click once, click again, and again, and again, and again, until you have surrounded the image. And you see here, I can go around the letters and not disturb any of the image. The final part you have to match, click it, and you can see the area selected. Press delete key and it's gone. Now I click back on the rectangular tool and just click anywhere once. And you can see the image has gone. So there is part five. Yellow has gone and the images have gone. Now let's try to make the text darker. In order to do this, you'll have to add one extra icon, which is called the Levels. Go to Edit, Preferences, and Toolbox. These are all the tools that you can see. If you click off the eye, it will disappear. You'll notice that Levels has not been chosen, so we'll click that on, and there it is there. Click OK. As you can see, there is now a Levels icon. We simply click on the Levels icon. Let's zoom in a bit. Click anywhere on the page, and this box comes up. The only tool we need is this one. I usually use this to make things darker. So this is our input level. And I'll try and drag the arrow left. That would make it lighter. That's not what we want. We want to get the dark arrow, if I can grab it. And as you can see, as I pull it to the right, it makes things darker. 
which is lovely. So let's do that. Press OK. And there you have, I'll just zoom out. And there you have the document, which is much darker. Now in our final part, we're going to export the file as a PDF. As you can see here, if you go to File, Save As and Save won't work. We need to export. So when we get to the export page, you can see it says yellow scan PDF. I'll probably call it yellow scan two. Now you can actually change it to a JPEG if you wish. And if you go to this little icon here and click up, you can see all of these extensions. And if I was to click, let's say, uh, let's say a GIF, notice at the top, it changes to GIF. And that would save it as a GIF, but I do want to save it as a PDF. So I'm going to scroll down to where it says PDF here. And I'm going to simply export it as scan two. So I'm going to leave everything as it is. Simply export. And then I'll go to my location and see where it is. Here it is, yellow scan two. And there is my file. So there we are, we've finished. It was a very quick video. We just deleted the background colors, deleted images, made text darker, and we saved the file as a PDF. Now in the PDF on page seven, there's a little bit of bonus material. In order to help you copy certain images, for instance, here, the letter N is not as wonderful as we would like, or the dots here are too short. And it's a very simple process of copying anything. So let's go back to our PDF and let's zoom in to that area we're talking about. Now, this N doesn't look pretty. I don't like it. I guess what we could do is get rid of that color by just doing that, the square, press delete. I could do another one, delete, another one, delete. But now my N is disturbed. All you have to do with that tool, highlight it over the N, press Shift and Alt, and simply drag it to the other side. And there you have it, a very simple way of copying certain files to others. These dots are longer than this one. So all I have to do is copy that, Shift Alt, and I can drag that down to there. And now everything looks hunky-dory again. I simply click Save. Look, it's gonna save it as XF. I want to save it as, or export it as a PDF. I'm going to export it as Yellow scan three. Export, leave everything as it is. And there we have the export scan. And you can see the N is perfect. The dots are all the same size. So that's the end of our quick lesson today. Remember, in the next lesson, I'm going to show you method two, which is actually easier than using GIMP. We're going to use paint.net to do exactly the same thing that we've done here. So, see you on the next video.